Hello everyone, myself Dr. Bharat Goswami and today I am going to teach you about morphology of acute inflammation. Morphology means gross and microscopic change in organ or tissue due to any disease, right? So in our previous lectures, we have discussed something about the mechanism of acute inflammation, you know, vascular and cellular events in the inflammation and we have discussed, you know, mediators involved in the acute inflammation. Now, let's see in short about the morphology, morphological changes. So there are basically eight to nine morphological patterns of acute inflammation. We will mainly discuss about the microscopic appearance of this all type of acute inflammation. So first we will begin with Caterhull inflammation. First variety is Caterhull. You know, it's a very commonest form of morphological pattern of acute inflammation. In our day to day life, you know, we are suffering from common cold. So that is the example of Caterhull inflammation in which mucus production is increased. Right, so common cold is an example of Caterhull inflammation. Second example, second morphological type is serous in inflammation. The name itself suggests here the serous fluid secretion is present. That's why the name serous acute inflammation is given. You know, there will be exudation of fluid, which is a cell poor. You know, cellularity is very low. It is only a serous fluid, thin serous fluid, like that of water, right? It's a common example are pleural effusion, skin blister. You know, this diagram shows a skin blister and synovitis. All right. Third morphological pattern of acute inflammation is a fibrinous inflammation. Fibrinous, the name itself suggests the fibrinous means fibrin material deposition, right? So here there will be fibrin deposition in the extracellular space, you know, surrounding the extracellular, uh, surrounding the cell, you know, in the extracellular space there will be fibrin material deposition and that's why the name fibrinous inflammation is given. So this is the fibrinous material deposition, right? Here you can see a fibrin material deposition which looks a pink color, right? And why fibrin accumulate in extracellular space? So there are two reasons. One is vascular region leakage and the second one is pro-coagulant stimuli. Whenever there is an endothelial injury, you know, coagulation system is activated and because of activation of coagulation system, fibrin can form which can deposit in extracellular tissue. And the second one is vascular leakage. Because of vascular leakage, you know, plasma protein from the center of the blood vessel will leak into the surrounding tissue. So these are the common reasons of fibrin material deposition, right? And microscopically, it look a pink eosinophilic mess work. See, this is the pink eosinophilic mess work, which is a fibrin, right? The most common example is humidic fever, humidic heart disease, in which the outer layer of pericardium is inflamed, which is known by the name pericarditis, you know, fibrinous pericarditis. It is also known by the name bread and butter pericarditis. All right. Now, purulent or suppurative inflammation, that is a fourth morphological type of acute inflammation. So see, grossly, you can see a purulent exuded depositor, deposition over the lung. See, this is the case of pneumonia, right? The purulent exuded deposit can be seen over the lung. Right, these all are the purulent accident aero area. This diagram is from the Robbins book of pathology, right? And microscopically, you can see a lots of neutrophil. You can you can see a lots of pus, right? The name given purulent means here there is a presence of pus. So the purulent exudate exudate means pus formation. In this inflammation, pus accumulation occur. Pus means neutrophils, liquefied debris of necrotic tissue, and the edema fluid. So in general, I want to say that pus is neutrophil collection and the necrotic debris collection, right? And you know, here the new, lots of neutrophil is present and neutrophil is having hydrolytic enzyme, lysozyme, right? So they will do the, you know, damage to the tissue. So there will be liquefaction, you know, it's an example of liquefactive necrosis. The common example is abscess formation. You know, it, it also seen in pneumonia, pneumonia lung, right? It's acute inflammation, right? One of the dangerous variety of acute inflammation. All right. Hemorrhagic inflammation, another morphological type. So why the name hemorrhagic inflammation is given? Because, you know, here there will be hemorrhage along with acute inflammation. So it's because of severe vascular injury or the coagulation factor deficiency. Obviously, hemorrhage can occur if coagulation factor deficiency is present, right? If coagulation system is not working properly, then you know bleeding will not stop so that can be the cause of hemorrhage and obviously vascular injury you know blood vessel damage is there then the blood will leak out you know it's uh, commonly seen in case of an acute pancreatitis 
All right. Now membrane has inflammation. So name itself suggests here there will be membrane formation. In this acute inflammation, membrane formation is there, which covered the epithelium. The common example, uh, you know, uh, the membrane. First of all, membrane is made up of fibrin. You know, disquamated epithelial cells and lots of inflammatory cell. Mainly, it is made up of fibrin, disquamated epithelial cell, and inflammatory cells. You know, common example is uh, pharyngitis by Clostridium diphtheria. You know, in diphtheria, if you observe the posterior pharynx, then white coating is present. You know, white membrane is present. All right, pseudo membranous inflammation. Now here, the true membrane is not present, but it mimic like that of true membrane formation. That's why the name pseudo membrane formation is given. And this pseudo membrane is nothing but, you know, uh, in this particular case, superficial mucosal ulcer will be covered by slough mucosa, fibrin, mucus, and the inflammatory cell. Right? It is made up of fibrin, mucus, and the inflammatory cell. And the ulcer is present over the superficial mucosa. Right? The ulcer, so it's due to the ulcer, it's due to the damage to the tissue, right? In the membranous, you know, uh, there is a no mucus, there is a no ulcer usually. In the pseudo membranous variety, the slough mucosa, you know, ulcer, mucus is also present. That's why it is a pseudo membranous inflammation. Common example is colitis by Clostridium difficile, right? All right. Now, another variety of last uh, variety of acute inflammation is necrotizing inflammation. The name itself suggests here there will be necrosis. So, along with bacterial putrefaction, there will be necrosis, right? So, whenever the bac bacterial putrefaction is present along with necrosis, the name is gangrene, right? Whenever necrosis is present with putrefaction, it is known by the name gangrene. So, here there will be gangrenous inflammation. And the most common example is gangrenous appendicitis. If appendici appendicitis is not treated timely, then gangrenous appendicitis can occur. So that's all about the morphological types of acute inflammation. Hope you have enjoyed this short tutorial. Thank you very much.